Hi everyone, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Plenty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I wanted to do a little video which is partially a, a good and the bad, so kind of a bit of a comparison and a bit of an update on my experiences with Pond. I've had a lot of my subscribers and a lot of my followers on Instagram ask me the same question. Can you dive into PON a bit more? I didn't necessarily want to do this video to begin with because I know there's a lot of videos out there on PON, but because everybody was requesting it, I thought might as well talk to you a bit more about the, the good and the bad that I have found along the way with PON, my experiences, and also some updates on some of the plants that I have moved into PON. And as always, I will caveat this and say, these have been my experiences. You might have very different experiences in your environment with the care that you provide your plants, but this has been what I have found with it basically. So let's go into the pros and cons first. So one of the things obviously that is very good about Pond, and let me pick up um, essentially what is a pot with Pond, and I will come back to why I've got a pot with just some Pond in it in later on in the video. The pot with Pond is here and you might be able to see if I bring it in a bit closer and hopefully that will focus and you can see there what Pond looks like and this is by a company called Lechuza so it's Lechuza Pond you might be able to see people talk about this online in that way and essentially it is a combination of small rocks or small pebbles and if I'm not mistaken it is pumice, pumice stone so pumice, for people that might not be aware, is also the same thing that you would use <laughs> in the shower to get rid of dead skin cells on your foot. I think that's how it's traditionally used. And if I'm not mistaken, again, it's a volcanic type of rock. Then you've got volcanic rock as well, which is the, the black little bits that you will find, black or brown when it's dry, that you will find within the Lachuse Pond. And then if I'm not mistaken, the blue bits are zeolite. And I I think it might be another volcanic stone, but I'm not entirely sure about that one. And there's also, and this is something else I've got, forgot to say, there's also slow release fertilizer, little pebbles, basically the same way that you would put into soil mixes, for instance. And that is essentially the combination of materials within Pond. Now I know a lot of people, so this is one of the first cons, is that this is actually quite expensive to buy the branded the choose upon. And especially if you want to transition <laughs> quite a few plants. I think the biggest bag that you can get at least in Europe is the 18 kilo bag, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 18 kilo or 18 liter? If I do remember when I'm editing this, I'll add it up here. But I think that's the biggest bag that you can get. I think I am successfully on to bag 10 or 12 of the big bags at this point. But to be fair, I think I think at this stage I have transitioned most of my plants in pond. So that gives you <laughs> that gives you a bit of an indication in terms of the pros. <laughs> and um, let's talk about that really quickly. The, the pro when it came to choose a pond is that it does tend to work quite well for a lot of plants and some of the pros is that because it's essentially just rocks, it's not soil, it's not compacted, there's an awful lot of, and you might be able to see, there's an awful lot of air that's gonna be happening within those little pebbles, which means that there's more air going to the roots, which means that there's less likelihood of them being, of there being um, root rot, because root rot happens in the absence of air when essentially usually soil mixes might be quite compacted and there's no air going to the roots. I'm pretty sure root rot is occurring due to bacteria. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's bacteria that's causing it. So the bacteria will generally thrive in an anaerobic environment, which means essentially it's a fancy scientific term to say it will thrive when there's no oxygen. So when there's a lot of water, when there's not a lot of aeration in the soil, that water and there's not enough oxygen there so it means this bacteria will grow quite quickly and it will then cause the root rot. If there is oxygen, that oxygen essentially will kill off that bacteria. So a lot of the times, and you've maybe seen me in some of my other videos, when you've got cuttings, I will always say when you do a cutting, 
leave it to callous over or dry out that cut end of the cutting out in the air essentially for a couple of hours and that's a twofold issue so essentially it helps that wound heal up but it also means that if there's any bacteria that has entered that cut when you were making that cut because it's exposed to that air and that oxygen it will die off because it's anaerobic so that's one of the benefits of PON is essentially it will reduce the chance, reduce, it doesn't eliminate completely, and I will come back to that in a minute, it doesn't eliminate completely, but it will reduce the chances of root rot because there's so much air within the PON. Coming back really quickly to the previous con that I was talking about in terms of the expense, and that is because it's a company, it's branded this product, and that's how most people know it. They know it as PON because that's what the company called it. It's very similar in kind of how people would use language. So for instance, in the UK, for a vacuum cleaner, a lot of people might still call it a Hoover, but a Hoover is a brand of vacuum cleaner. Do you see, do you see the difference here, basically, or the similarities, essentially? You can make your own mix. The Lechuza PON mix, I think, is based quite or at least was inspired by um, a similar mix that people were using for years for bonsais. And at the moment, uh, it is completely eluding me what it's called, but again, I'll put it up here. People that are into bonsais are probably already screaming at their screens going, it's this, and I'm just like, yeah, I know, but I'm just like blocking at the moment. <laughs> um, and that is kind of what it's based on. Kind of coming down to the basics with this is, it's nice to have the lava rock in there, it's nice to have the zeolite in there, it's nice to have the slow release fertilizer, but if you really are strapped for cash, either you could make this same mix yourself and you can buy all the individual parts separately. Um, obviously that would mean that you'd need to have space to have large bags of pumice and zeolite and lava rock. So not for everybody, not especially those people living in small apartments, so unfortunately you might have to buy the bag of the premix things. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's other companies, I might be wrong, but I think there's pretty sure there's other companies definitely on Etsy that might be doing their own PON mix essentially that isn't Lechuza, which might be potentially a bit cheaper. But uh, in essence, you could not add the zeolite, you could not add the lava rock, and you could just do it with the pumice stones alone. You could then add the slow release fertilizer pebbles that you would use normally in the soil and the same thing if you want to recreate the same environment. But it would kind of create a similar and slightly cheaper mix. And I, if I'm not mistaken, again, this is something, so pumice rocks is something that a lot of people have been using for a lot of years on their own to grow things like houseplants. I think this was some this was a substrate that a lot of the managed houseplant companies were doing. And by managed houseplant companies, I mean the companies that used to manage houseplants in office buildings, where they would go in and maintain the plants for that office so that the people that work in there don't have to remember to water or prune and do all these things to the plants. I'm pretty sure a lot of them would be using something like pumice and using something like a self-watering pot. And now we're going back to another pro. So another pro is with the choose a pond or a similar mix that you might be doing yourself is that you can put it into a self-watering pot. And essentially because all of the little elements in the pond, so I'm pretty sure even the zeolite, so the zeolite, the pumice, the lava rock, They've all got little nooks and crannies in each one of the rocks, very similar to when you'd be using something like perlite. Again, it can trap little bubbles of air, well, it was bubbles of air, little droplets of air, I should say, um, within the rock itself. So it does help with the capillary action. You get this with other substrates like lecker. So with lecker, you would have the same thing if you put the lecker, and usually you'd have about a third of the pot sitting in the water mixture essentially at the bottom and then that plant would then suck up that water from the capillary action. Essentially what the capillary action is doing is it's pulling water against gravity so it's pulling water up through those little crevices that are in those little rocks up to the higher levels of the growing media, in this case the pond. Now that's all great because it means you can put it in a self-watering pot, 
and it means that you can kind of leave it there and it will kind of suck up that um, water from the base. Flipping back to a con now, and I'd like to be balanced as much as possible with this because then you need to know what you're getting into. This is still a semi-hydro way of growing. And by that it means that if you were just to put in the water, obviously if you're getting the lechuza upon itself and making it, or even making it yourself, and, you, and you've got that self, the slow release fertilizer in there, it will, at least for about six months, that's usually the lifespan of the slow release fertilizer, it will still provide some nutrition to the roots of that plant and to the plant in itself through that slow release fertilizer. But if you want to supplement in any way, you would then need to start adding fertilizer to the water mix that you're adding to the bottom of the self-watering container. And that is a whole different video. I don't know if I'd, if I'd be brave enough to do a video like that because I struggled with it when I was using Lekka. I dropped Lekka quite quickly because I could not get it to work. Um, in hindsight, having spoken to some friends, I think the plants that I started trialing it out on were probably not the best plants to have in Lekka. But neither here nor there. And I struggle to get that mixing of the nutrition, the micronutrients and the micro, the micro and the macronutrients mixed into the water because depending on how you add it in, it could make the water acidic, it could do all these things. So this is something that I would maybe suggest for people that are quite comfortable with growing plants, maybe not for a full, full, full beginner because there are still things, even with pond, that could go a bit wrong. And it might put you off when, in essence, it's just because you didn't have those kind of years of experience behind you to be able to go, oh, no, I shouldn't be doing this, obviously, because it needs to be do this. But there's no obviously if you're just starting off. But yeah, so that's something to bear in mind. Yes, it's self-watering, but the con is you need to get you need to find a, something that you're comfortable using as nutrition within the water of that self-watering vessel that you're going to have at the bottom so that there is also nutrients going into the plants after that slow release fertilizer is done. Now for me, and I will always say this and I probably sound like a broken record and obviously hashtag this is not sponsored, uh, but here in the UK I've been using liquid gold leaf. The good thing about liquid gold leaf fertilizer is that it works really well with traditional growing media like coir or uh, soil mixes as well, but it also works at a lower level. It's on the bottle, I'm not going to bore you, but on the bottle you can mix a lower dilution amount in the water and you can use it in semi-hydro and not have to worry about getting a whole bunch of different bottles and things and mixing them and doing potions and worrying about pH and all these things. It does it for you. I don't have to worry about it. I've used it. I've not had any problem with it. So that's my two cents on that. But the other thing with this is, <laughs> let's go back to a, a negative, to a con. This is lovely. It's nice and airy and it's little pebbles. Can you see? I just dropped a few down. <laughs> if you accidentally knock one of these pots over, and I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to be spending the next half an hour cleaning little pebbles from the floor, they scatter everywhere. So that is a con. It is one of those things that you need to bear that in mind. It's also another con is because it's rocks, it's going to be a lot heavier than a soil mix. So also something to bear in mind. Some people might like it as well. And this is also unlike Lekka and unlike soil even sometimes, uh, especially the really, really light, airy soil mixes, because it's so dense and so heavy, even though it's quite airy because of all the rocks and the little nooks and crannies, this, if you put something like a support stick, if you put something like a moss pole or a plank, it keeps it in place because it has those rocks around it to put it in. So that is a positive. So it's good for things like moss poles and planks and things like that because it keeps them upright and it doesn't jostle too much. And wrapping up on the pros and cons, I think there's probably a few more that I could mention, but I think the big one to mention, and this is something that I've learned from a very, very dear friend on Instagram, and I knew this from day one, so I was fortunate enough to do this, is that there is a transitional period. There is a transitional period to get your plants into pond, especially if they've been in soil and been growing happily. So, I'll give you a bit of a tip here. 
If you've got a plant that you've rooted out in a water propagation and then moving it into pond, nine times out of 10, I would say, it will do absolutely fine. It will grow quite vigorously because essentially what it's got is water roots. And don't take my word for this because I don't know if it's scientifically accurate with this one, but I would imagine in pond you get a kind of a bit of a hybrid root of it's a water root, but it's also one that could potentially do okay in soil if you decide to move it into soil rather than just a straight up water root that you would then want to put into soil and there might be a bit of a janky period whilst it transitions into the soil from the water root. So that will do really well, but sometimes going from soil roots into something like the pond could be problematic because pond or Lechuza will say on its websites that you, you don't have to necessarily get all the soil off before you put it into the pond. And a lot of the other YouTubers would say this as well. Yes and no with that one. It depends on the plant. And I have tried it with a couple of them and they've not been as successful and they've not been as quick to acclimate. I still try to wash off as much of the soil as I possibly can from the roots of that plant. Yes, it's going to stress it out. So that will kind of knock you back a bit in terms of growth and then put it into the pond because as I mentioned it does reduce the chances of root rot but it doesn't get rid of it entirely so having organic media like a soil mix or a choir mix in the inorganic media which essentially is what this is it's, it's an inorganic media all of these pebbles it could still promote that bacteria to come in because only part of it is inorganic. The rest of it is organic in there and it might not be getting enough oxygen at that point. So bear that in mind, I like to do that. It might not be for everybody, but it has worked for me. So let's go into maybe some of my experiences with how I found Pond to work for me. Let me put this down and let's just hack through it and hopefully I'll bring up some examples and show you. Okay, starting off with some of the obvious examples is most of the philodendron that I have put into Lechuza Pond I've pretty much just kept on keeping on quite, quite quickly, I would say. And to be fair, most of my philodendron cuttings now, I don't even bother propagating them in anything else. I stick them directly into a self-watering pot already with water of Pond and they root out quite quickly and they start growing quite quickly. So this is one that I would say nine times out of 10 does really, really well. And as I said, propagating directly into pond so you don't even need to then move it out of that media. Let me put this back and I'll pick something else up. Syngoniums are the next thing that I've got in pond. Now this has been interesting. Most of them do really, really well in the choose a pond. And this has been my experience with some plants now. So for instance, with the philodendron, and this is part of the reason why I use Lechuza Pon, is from what I was seeing from other people when they were using Pon as a substrate, and I do apologize for probably the amount of times that I've mentioned Pon in this video. If, if I can be bothered during the editing and I can't make any promises, I might do a counter somewhere, but probably not. It depends. Uh, <laughs> but um, with this, and one of the things that I found and one of the reasons why I wanted to transition to Pon it's because I wanted to reduce the speed of growth ever so slightly in comparison to what I had to my soil mixes. So with my soil mixes, and you can see some of my big, big plants around me, they grew relatively fast. And it, most plants will grow relatively fast in pond as well, but at a slightly lower rate, I found. I'm sure people that have done pond might kind of have a different experience, do let me know down below and maybe let me know how you treat your pond and how it might be different from what I'm gonna be talking about now. I would love to learn because yes, some plants, I would like them to grow a bit slower because I'm fast running out of space or pretty much haven't got any more space. So I would like them to grow a bit more slowly. Um, but for the people that are looking for it to go super, super fast, again, in my experience, I found a good chunky Aroid soil mix which is as similar as it can get to what they would have in nature, does, in my experience, make most plants grow a bit faster. There's more risks on that one. So pros and cons again. But yeah, syngoniums do grow quite, quite nicely in this, but they 
are a bit slower to grow. They don't have any issues acclimating as long as you get most of the soil off them. They're, they're relatively hardy plants anyway at the best of times. And the other thing I wanted to say is that with Syngoniums, I tend to find that it grows a more bushy plant rather than a quite a leggy plant. And I don't know, maybe it's got more to do with the lighting that I've got these propagations in, because some of them are propagations, some of them are plants that I put straight into soil. This, I will also say with Syngoniums, do quite well from going directly from soil into, uh, as long as you wash off the soil, into pond without skipping much of a beat. But let's talk about a different type of plant. One of the last pros and cons that I want to talk about is that with most plants, and again, something that the pond do have on their website is you need to transition them slowly into a self-watering container and not do it quickly. And this is something that I learned from a very good friend online again, is if you can, when you're starting off with pond, especially if you're moving from soil into pond, even if you've washed off all the soil from the roots, ideally, if you can leave it for a couple of months of the plants just being in the pond without a self-watering container at the bottom and let them dry out the same way that you would if they were in soil. So pr pretty much keep watering them the same way that you would if, you were, if they were in soil. So it's always a good idea to put them in containers that have still got drainage holes because you're gonna flush the water through at roughly the same amount of time that you would if they were in soil. Now, the con of this one is with soil, you can put a moisture meter in, you can lift it up to see if it's any lighter or heavier, if it's got water, it's heavy, if it's light, it's, it needs to be watered. Or sometimes you can just look at the soil and see that it's dry and then you only would water it. With pond, it's quite tricky to know, especially when you're first starting off, and I struggled with this a bit in the beginning of how often to water so there is a chance that you might be overwatering, but again, the positive there is because it's so airy, it's less likely that you're going to cause root rot. You might get some yellowing leaves, but it should bounce back relatively easily. So that is something that not enough people talk about here, is a bit of a transitional period. So I've decided to put most of my plants in pond because it becomes so overwhelming to water all of them and I wanted to get most of them in self-watering pots. But listening to my friend, and she's only just been able to do that now after a year, because they were able to um, transfer all of their plants into pond. It's taken a year to transition everything into self-watering. And she's very happy now with everything being in self-watering, but it took a while for it to, to transition into self-watering. The reason for that is if you move certain things straight into self-watering, you might then still get some root rot because it's too much of a shock. It's a different media. It's also constantly wet when it might have going fully dry in the soil before. So I would say if you can exhibit a bit of caution, the moment that you start seeing some of those roots coming out of the bottom of the lechuze upon pot, I would say maybe start attempting to put them into self-watering containers and then it's fine. And the, most of the times when I've done it that way, it's been absolutely fine. The other big thing that I've done in pond is Calatheas, Marantas, and all of these things. So this is a lemon lime Maranta. This was another lemon lime Maranta. And you can see both of these were water propagations. This one did really well and it's growing happily in pond. This one struggled and has died. So this is one of the types of plants and generally the prayer plants. I found if again, and this is crucial with these ones, Almost 100% of the time, moving a prayer plant from soil, they generally don't like their roots being disturbed at the best of times. But moving them from soil into pond, it is possible and sometimes it might work. But I found in my experience that's generally going to lead to a bit of failure. If you've water propagated your prayer plant and then moving it into pond, generally it will do absolutely fine. But even that is not foolproof. But the one thing I will say, this is one of the plants that, <laughs> and people that have been growing in Lekka might be laughing at me. I tried growing this in Lekka when I was attempting to grow in Lekka and it died a death quickly. Um, but from what I've heard from other people, and I've seen this in my experience, I wanted to try it out. It does better in pond in semi-hydro than it ever would do in Lekka. And I think it's just purely because of the 
amount of air. Leco has a lot of air around it. This still has a lot of air, but it's smaller pockets, if that makes sense. So something to bear in mind with your prayer plants. But the benefit with something like this is if you do get it to work, prayer plants being as fussy as they are with the watering schedule, when you finally get this working and it's in self-watering, because it's pretty much is sitting in a uh, essentially a vessel of water, I don't have to worry about it. You don't really get any crispy tips or anything like that, but it does take a while and you will be dealing with juvenile leaves for a bit longer before you get the more mature leaves. So let me put this down and I'll talk about the last type of plant that I've moved into pond. And the last few types, actually, I was going to talk about one, but I'll talk about a few. Alocasias, they've done all right in pond. I've had mixed experiences with some alocasias. The, the bigger, more kind of upright alocasias, they take a while, especially if they've been in soil for a long period of time. And again, this is a one common theme. If you've got a very mature plant that's been used to growing in soil for a while, it will probably take a knock. And it could be a couple of months until it acclimates if it doesn't die. Um, to get used to pond, uh, I find slightly smaller plants will do better in pond because they that's where they will grow for the rest of their lives and it does really, really well. Not to say that you can't move bigger, more mature plants in pond. I have done it and it's been okay, but that's a bit more challenging, I have found. Again, I encourage you, if you've had a different experience, do drop it in the comments down below and be nice to each other if possible. <laughs> but, um, but yes, yeah, so alocasia, my dual alocasias, if I'm looking at the moment, my um, black velvet, and I'm, I would get it out, but it's just too difficult to pull it out, isn't doing that great, but it's doing okay. My alocasia poly amazonica one, the one that you can easily get in most garden stores, is doing exceptionally well. That was a mature plant, moved it into pond, did not skip a beat, loving life. Some of my slightly bigger alocasias struggled a bit. Now, the other type of plant I want to talk about is anthurium. So I've actually got quite a few of my Anthurium at the moment in Pon, and even the one that I was worried about, which was my Anthurium Regal. So far, touch wood, even that's doing quite, quite well in Pon, and it's just the right kind of environment from them because it's very, very airy, but it also has evenly, it's an evenly moist environment, so that works quite well for them. But I think I've probably prattled on for an awful lot of time for this video. People that wanted a longer video, there you go. <laughs> Hopefully you've enjoyed. If And as I said this before in the video, if you've got any questions, comments, do drop them down below. Let's have that conversation. I know a lot of people are wanting to experiment with Pon or already experimenting with Pon. Let's have that chat. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, bye.